This is the source of your happiness that I'm carrying. My resignation letter. I hope now you'll be very happy. Zainab's mouth worked soundlessly as Alihan turned to brush past her. Panic jolted her into action and she stepped to block his path. Stop. She finally burst out, stunning them both with her vehemence. I'm trying to say something and you keep talking over me. Alihan looked back at her and said, Do you still have some pending accusations? Then, I'm sorry I don't have time for that. Zainab softly said, Please, Alihan, sir. Alihan was shocked by that sudden change in her. Zainab continued, Please listen to me. Zainab's voice was laced with exasperation. What are you always in such a hurry for? Can't you see I'm trying to talk to you? Alihan opened his mouth, no doubt to deliver another biting retort, but Zainab barreled on. I couldn't sleep last night because of you. That gave him pause, his brow furrowing as he really looked at her for the first time. The shadows under her eyes, her anxious demeanor. Zainab clutched the gift tighter, fixing him with an earnest gaze. We can't afford to lose a good teacher like you. Alihan was out of words after her declaration of words. Then he said, Why? I was the man behind that incident, according to you. I just wanted to, wanted to, leave it. His jaw ticked. I know, I lied to you about the auditorium decoration and that was my foolishness. That's why I came there in the auditorium to tell you everything as soon as I realized my mistake, but I didn't get the chance, and things just kept piling up, one after another. His shoulders slumped then, as if carrying a heavy, invisible burden. Zainab studied him carefully. Sir, she took a tentative step closer. Because I know what this profession means to you. She exhaled shakily. We won't let you go anywhere, sir. Alihan's head whipped up, eyes flying wide with shock and fear. Zainab pressed on before he could protest. I understand now. The pain you've endured, the weight you still carry. Her throat worked as she struggled for words. But you don't worry, sir. We all are here for you. Your students. Ruya. Me. Alihan's breath stopped at that moment as he looked into her eyes. Then Zainab pulled that gift in front and said, Sir. I want to make things right. Here, this is the photo frame. Now you can keep your mother's picture safely in it. She smiled at Alihan. Alihan kept looking at her as if searching for something in her eyes. Then he softly asked, What do you actually want, Miss Yomaz? Zainab lost in his eyes for a moment then said, Sir, please don't leave us. As Alihan was about to speak, a group of his students gathered around. They said, Sir, we won't let you go anywhere. Sir, please don't resign from this job. Alihan looked at them for a moment while handling a paper to one of his students and said, I'm giving this authority to all of you. This is my resignation letter. Either you can submit it to the dean or throw it into a bin. You all have the choice. Make it wisely. With that, he took the photo frame from Zainab's hand and said, Thank you, Miss Yomaz, and walked away. Alihan is in his room at night. He gently placed the photo frame having a picture of his mother at the bedside table. He smiled and remembered how Zainab gifted that photo frame to him. Deeply he was impressed how Zainab respected his mother. Alihan traced a finger reverently over the frame's edge while thinking about Zainab, how Zainab's compassion reframed his most precious memory about his mother. The more he looked at the frame, her selfless actions continued to echo through his soul, warming him from the inside out. Zainab's room Zainab hugged her knees to her chest, unable to keep the contented smile from her face as she relived the day's events. She murmured happily. Finally, Ali Hansur got what he deserved. Then she turned serious and said, He always wanted to be the man his mother raised him to be. He chose to be a professor because it's a highly respected job. He wanted to dedicate all the respect he received to his mother's feet. She took a deep breath and continued, I don't know what kind of man he actually is, but for the sake of his mother, it was necessary for him to continue this job. He's so devoted to his mother. Whatever he said or did to me, I can't forget that easily, but his words in the diary can't be fake. The way he gathered those glass pieces despite being hurt to save his mother's photograph, that was so unconditional. His trembling heart finally found that sole support in this job by returning the respect to his mother, which according to him she never got in her life from anyone. That's why she wanted her son to be the most respectable man in society. If Alihan sir had left this job because of me, that burden would continue to haunt me for the rest of my life. I can't break that emotional bridge between a mother and son. The shimmering skyline of Dubai glittered through the floor-to-ceiling windows of their luxurious penthouse. Beza sat at the beautifully set dining table, nervously smoothing her dress and glancing at the clock. She had gone all out to prepare a special dinner for Ali. Ali walked in, phone in hand, 
barely glancing at the table. Beza, I don't have much time. I need to take this call, he said, his tone distant. Beza's face fell. Ali, I prepared this special dinner for us. Can't you put your phone away for just one evening? Ali sighed, clearly irritated. Beza, you know how important this deal is. I can't just ignore it. But what about us? Beza's voice wavered. When will you make time for me, for us? Ali glanced at her briefly, then back at his phone. We'll talk later, okay? I really need to handle this. Feeling a mix of hurt and anger, Beza stood up from the table. Later. That's all you ever say, Ali. I'm starting to feel like I'm just an accessory in your life. Ali finally looked at her, a flicker of guilt crossing his face. Beza, please understand. This is for our future. Our future. Beza laughed bitterly. What future? You don't even see me. I'm right here, Ali, but you don't even notice. Ali's phone rang again, and he answered it, turning his back on her. Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, he said, walking out of the room without another word to Beza. Beza stood alone by the table, the romantic dinner she had prepared now, a painful reminder of how unimportant she felt. The candles flickered, casting shadows that mirrored her inner turmoil. In the university lecture hall, Alahan is deep in his lecture. The students were engaged, diligently taking notes. Zeynep and Ruya were seated in the front row, focused and attentive. Suddenly, Alihan's phone rang, its insistent tone breaking the flow of his lecture. With an irritated sigh, he cut the call and continued speaking. Barely a minute passed before it rang again. His frustration was evident as he said, Excuse me, to his students then picked up the call with a mix of annoyance and concern. What? How? Why do you? Tell me where you are, I'm coming, he said urgently into the phone. His face faded. Zeynep and Ruya exchanged worried glances, sensing the gravity of the situation. Alihan ended the call, clearly panicking. I'm sorry. There's some personal emergency. I have to leave, he announced, his voice strained. Without another word, he grabbed his things and rushed out of the classroom. As he ran out, Zeynep turned to Ruya, her brow furrowed with concern. What happened to him? I hope everything is fine. Alihan sped through the city, his mind racing with worry. He finally reached a park where he found his grandmother's caretaker pacing anxiously. Alihan stormed over his face a mask of anger and fear. What were you doing when she left? How can you be so careless? He shouted, his voice trembling with emotion. She doesn't even have a mobile phone. The caretaker looked equally distressed. Sir, I'm worried too. She hasn't taken Alzheimer's medicine this morning. She was being cranky about staying indoors, so I brought her here to calm her down. I turned my back for just a moment, and she disappeared. I don't know where she went. Alihan's heart sank as he looked around the busy park. Anxiety gnawing at him. We need to find her. She could be anywhere, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. The weight of the situation pressed down on him, but he pushed his panic aside, determined to find his grandmother. Back at the university, Zeynep couldn't concentrate on her studies. She kept thinking about Alihan and the fear she had seen on his face. Her mind wandered back to the lecture, replaying the moment over and over. I hope everything's okay, she murmured to herself feeling an unfamiliar ache of concern for Alihan. 